My name is Fadin Santana. In 2015, I filmed the killing of Walter Scott with my Samsung Galaxy S5. I'm Arthur Reed, and in 2016, this was used to record the police killing of Alton Sterling in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Over the last decade or so, the smartphone has emerged as one of the strongest tools for capturing police brutality and racial injustice towards African Americans. The smartphone's camera are the only thing that we have to protect ourselves. But it is a um, weapon that tells the story. This is going to tell what happened to me. This is going to tell what took place. Americans have just witnessed this power to document after Darnella Frazier, a 17-year-old in Minneapolis, captured the killing of George Floyd on her iPhone 11. She hit record and held steady for 10 minutes to capture Floyd's final words. I've chosen to limit the amount of graphic visuals from that video and the others featured in this piece. The next day, Frazier posted her video to Facebook and then, well, the world reacted. The clarity of the video and the ease of sharing it wasn't possible a decade ago, and certainly not three decades ago, when footage of the beating of Rodney King was captured on a Sony Handycam. By watching cell phone footage of police brutality from the last 11 years, you can see at least a five times increase in the resolution of images. You can also see how the proliferation of smartphones and social media made it easier for more and more people to capture and see the side of the story that before was so easily lost. In 2009, cell phones were used for one of the first times to capture police brutality. At the Fruitvale BART transit station in Oakland, California, various bystanders captured footage of an officer shooting 22-year-old Oscar Grant. Some views were captured by point-and-shoot cameras, like Karina Vargas's Fujifilm FinePix, which could only capture 480p footage. Others with flip phones with 1.3 megapixel cameras that shot 240p video captured the incident. At the time, texting a video cost more money and was slower over 3G networks. Footage was shared with local broadcast channels and it was later used as evidence in the trial against Johannes Meserly, the officer who killed Grant. In 2010, he was convicted of second degree murder. From 2009 to 2015, smartphones began to take off and cameras got increasingly better and were more easily accessible. In 2011, Apple added the ability to get the camera from the lock screen. The video cameras got the ability to shoot HD video and storage increased so we could all shoot more of it. Later that year, Pew Research Center started reporting smartphone ownership. 35% of Americans owned a smartphone. By the end of 2014, it had grown to 59%. That same year, in New York City, the killing of Eric Gardner was recorded in 720p HD by Ramsey Orta using a Samsung Galaxy with a five megapixel camera. The video was given to the Daily News and it quickly spread online via YouTube. Though Gardner's death was ruled a homicide, the officer involved was not indicted. By 2015, 69% of Americans had a smartphone. Faden Santana was one of them. In March, he got a new Samsung Galaxy S5 as a present. The first thing he filmed on it? Officer Michael Slager shooting and killing Walter Scott in North Charleston, South Carolina. As soon as I heard the taser sound and I heard that they were on the ground, I decided you know, to, to record and just um, try to get as close as possible you know, so the officer can see me. Just, you know, to prevent any any bad situation between them. Santana shared the video file with the Scott family, and it quickly made its way to TV and around the internet. The video was used as evidence in the trial, and Officer Slager was sentenced to 20 years in prison. 2015 saw lots of other incidents captured. This was also a very big era for mobile video. Facebook launched its live video service, and Twitter launched the ability to easily upload video from mobile phones. From 2016 to 2019, smartphone ownership went from 72% to 81%. Many incidents were captured during this period, including Diamond Reynolds' Facebook live stream of the shooting of Philando Castile in Minnesota. Then there were multiple videos of the shooting of Alton Sterling in Baton Rouge. Unlimited data plans, social apps that made it easier for sharing video, and the addition of multiple cameras on phones during this time made recording video a reflex action. And by 2020, it was for Darnella Frazier. 
On May 25th, she encountered George Floyd surrounded by police officers in front of Cup Foods in Minneapolis. And she took out her iPhone and began filming. The video and the audio are clearer than any other because of Frazier's proximity to the incident, but also the iPhone's 12 megapixel camera, 1080p resolution, and video stabilization. Frazier uploaded the video to Facebook the following day. It sparked national protests. It has happened, it has happened again. It's similar to what um, Will Smith has said. He said that uh, racism didn't just start. It's just starting to be filmed now. And when you can see it on film, then you know changes have to come. 